about 150 years ago, a major development affected the fauna of Israel and the entire Middle East. The introduction of firearms led to the rapid annihilation of several wildlife species. Roe deer and fallow deer disappeared completely. The last roe deer was shot on the Carmel in 1912. The disappearance of the grazers led rapidly to the disappearance of the predators as well, including leopards, bears and wolves. Birds of prey, which nested on the cliffs and in the woodlands, also disappeared, whether as a result of hunting or poisoning. In the 70s, the director of what was then the Nature Reserve Authority, today the Nature and National Parks Authority, Reserve General Avram Yoffe, began to fulfill a popular dream to bring the animals of the Bible back to Israel. He established two wildlife reserves, Haibar Yotvata in the Arava Desert and Haibar Carmel in the Mediterranean highlands, and began a worldwide search for the animals that had once roamed Israel's countryside, including oryxes, wild asses, wild goats, and wild sheep. To this day, these reserves serve as centers for the acclimatization, reproduction, restoration, and rejuvenation of the endangered or extinct species. Fallow deer were the highlight of Yopi's dream. At that time, a small herd of the same species of Mesopotamian fallow deer that had become extinct locally still existed in an Iranian nature reserve. On a visit to Israel several years earlier, the Shah of Iran's brother had promised Yofei two pair of fallow deer. Though the Shah's family had fled from Iran at the beginning of the uprising against them, Yofei refused to forfeit this treasure which he had been promised. In 1978, as the battles of the Khomeini revolution raged, he sent Mike Van Grivenbroek, then head of the Yotvata Reserve, to collect the promised deer. Itzik Segev, Israel's military attaché in Iran, joined the effort. Mike arrived with an explicit promise from the Shah's brother, Abdel Riza, of two pair of fallow deer for the Nature Reserves Authority. Iran was aflame. Huge demonstrations raged in the streets. We went straight to Abdel Riza. Mike arrived and the man responsible for the Caspian Sea region of their nature reserves began helping him find two pair. Then, as they departed, Mike let it slip that they were headed for Israel, and the Iranians said, for Israel, not even one fallow deer. Mike decided to save the situation. He jumped off the moving truck next to some fallow deer and without distinguishing male from female, pregnant or not, he loaded four. The fallow deer were flown to Israel on the last El Al flight to leave Tehran. Here they were entrusted to Salah Makhladeh, under whose dedicated care they have multiplied into a flourishing herd of several hundred, the largest of its kind in the world today. Avram arrived with crates and said, either we succeed with this herd and return the fallow deer to the countryside, or we fail. It's up to you. I worked day and night. I lived with the animals to sense what they were feeling, because we didn't have any others and there was nowhere to get any more. That's all there is and we have to raise a herd to return them to nature. By 1996, we reached more than 100 individuals, what allowed us to free the first batch. I even cried when the trucks left with the crates to release them. Follow deer that are ready to survive on their own are subdued with anesthetized darts, and electronic chips are inserted under their skin for future identification. Some have transmitters strapped to their necks to help monitor their movement in the wild within the Nahal Sea Nature Reserve. A herd of roe deer, smaller and more delicate than the fallow deer, is also being raised in the Haibar Carmel Reserve for release on the Mount Horshan Nature Reserve. Today, small herds of fallow and roe deer live freely in Israel's countryside. They mate successfully, producing growing numbers of offspring who have never experienced life in captivity. Apart from the fallow and roe deer, the High Bar Carmel Reserve also houses a wide variety of wildlife species, including birds of prey also slated to return to nature. In 1996, the Nature and National Parks Authority, the Israel Electric Company, and the Society for the Protection of Nature established Spread a Wing the adoption of vultures and birds of prey in Israel to save Israel's birds of prey. As part of this project, 
A reproduction, acclimatization and release center for endangered birds of prey was established at the High Bar Carmel Reserve. Vulture chicks that hatch in the reproduction cage or the incubator are cared for tenderly and transferred to special acclimatization cages. At age two, each vulture receives an identification mark on its wing and some are fitted with radio transmitters. Then they are released to join Israel's free vulture population. As part of the Spread a Wing project, the Israel Electric Corporation operates a special shielding program to prevent the electrocution of birds of prey on high tension power lines. Vultures raised in captivity have helped in the design of the insulated shields which protect the unsuspecting birds. Thousands of electricity poles near sensitive areas with large vulture populations have been shielded, allowing them to be landed upon safely. But electrocution is not the only threat to Israel's vulture population. The expansion of urbanization and built-up areas at the expense of open spaces, illegal hunting, chemical pesticides, and a shrinking food supply all add to the danger. In 2004, for example, dozens of vultures in the Galilee and the Golan Heights died after eating poisoned cattle carcasses intended for the wolves and jackals which prey on local calves. To minimize future damage from poisoning, the Nature and National Parks Authority provides farmers and cowboys with advice and help in devising alternative solutions. It also operates feeding stations to supplement dwindling natural food supplies. The Haibar Carmel Reserve has such a station where vultures are fed carcasses collected from regional farms under close veterinary supervision. Another bird of prey being nurtured at the Carmel Reserve for return to nature is the Lanner Falcon, in a program operating successfully since 1989. It is the researchers' hope that when released, the adult falcon couples will nest in the Carmel area, thus recreating the region's once permanent falcon population. The first Lanner Falcon couple nested successfully in 2002 at the top of one of the Hadera Power Station smokestacks. But not only mammals and birds of prey require nurturing and protection programs. Extensive surveys throughout the Galilee and the Carmel region have shown a significant decrease in the population of fire salamanders, rare amphibians which live near water sources in northern Israel, as these have become polluted or have disappeared in the wake of development. At a special pool built in the Chaibar Carmel Reserve, Salamander tadpoles collected from natural pools about to dry up are given a second chance to survive. As they mature, they spread out and become protected tenants throughout the reserve. The wildlife reserve is one of several nature reserves on the Carmel, which together form a green lung in which man and nature coexist peacefully. The Carmel has been declared a biospheric reserve, which integrates all components of the landscape within its bounds, nature, man, communities and farmland and preserves the balance among them. The Carmel is a popular venue for nature lovers year-round but especially during winter and spring when it abounds with color. Carpets of wildflowers including anemones, tulips and cyclamen attract picnickers from all over the country. Unfortunately, not all of them are aware of the importance of keeping the Carmel clean and leave garbage behind. As environmental awareness grows, the countryside and environs of rural communities will hopefully be freed of this ecological blight. In summer, when the grasses dry up, dense woodlands become dangerously flammable. In 1989, a huge fire which raged on the Carmel burnt some of the indigenous wildlife to death. To prevent future fires, research is being conducted on thinning area woodlands by controlled grazing. The follow deer herd will help solve this problem in the future. The High Bar Carmel Wildlife Reserve offers visitors a glimpse of nature's wonders, its components and the ways in which they interrelate. It is not only a center of research in animal husbandry, but also a hub of education and community activity, 
hosting volunteers performing a variety of tasks from Haifa and other regional communities. It is an example of community involvement in maintaining its local wildlife nature reserve as an inherent component of its lifestyle and world view. Such partnership promises a flourishing future for the Carmel. The animals of the Bible will roam freely in the natural woodland and we will enjoy a cleaner, richer and more ecologically sound environment. <laughs>